we're close to the beach. So South Coast, I don't know much about Australia. I do. You're close to Brisbane. Where? How far is that from Sydney? And then how far is that from Perth? Okay, so Australia is the size of the US. Brisbane's mm-hmm. on the east coast of the country, and Perth okay. is on the west coast, five and a half hours. We live about an hour south of Brisbane. There's a, about a 60 kilometres of probably the best beaches, well, in Australia and perhaps big parts of the world. So where we live is at Main Beach, and there's a whole series of little towns right along the beach shore, and there's the area we live in, there's quite a lot of high-rise, and then there's rivers nearby, so there's a lot of nice. canals and that. So it's a pretty good spot. So, so it's about so, a, a, a thousand kilometres from Sydney, by the way, to put it in perspective. Okay, so where, where would I fly into when I come visit? You fly into Brisbane, which okay. is an international airport, and then it's it's an hour driving down the highway to okay. the start of the Gold Coast. Well, that's on my list, so I'll, I'm definitely coming. I got invited, so I'm I'm coming. I've just got to figure out when. Well, as Karen and Kevin Nickel that you met, they um, they live in the building next door to us. We were neighbours twenty years ago, and here we are revisiting the same space after all these years. That's so funny. That's really that's really weird how that happened. Did you plan it like that? No, not at all. They they moved down <laughs> the Gold Coast fifteen years ago, and eventually Kerry talked me into relocating because the businesses were in Brisbane. So ah. I don't think once once you're here, you're a you're a coasty. It's such a remarkable literally I'm looking out my window and it's just all blue ocean and beaches and look out the other window and there's river and hinterland and, you know, some wonderful hills. So it's a pretty remarkable spot in the diversity of, of the scenery. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about when did you get your travel book or how did you get it? We've sort of been traveling for for many, many years. Um, I do a lot of travel in Asia on business, probably been to pretty much every country there because we've been ported out of the area. But Kerry and I have been traveling for about fairly consistently for about 15 years. But once we became empty nesters 10 years ago, well, then we really pushed the button on that. And mm-hmm. we've done a lot of travel, probably three trips a year. Three trips a year? Hmm. Different places. See, Asia's not seven or eight hours from us. We might, two or three years ago, uh, we spent about th- three months in Thailand in Chiang Mai in the north. That was a oh, great nice. experience. Hmm. So did you, was it work-related or was it totally leisure? Predominantly leisure. Like Kerry's retired a few years ago, so she does, some, she does a bit of charity work, but she's not committed to any time frame. Mm-hmm. But I do a lot of work in we have a lot of websites and affiliate sites so there's a big community of people that I know in Chiang Mai so it was a just it's like a little bit of a Silicon Valley of Asia so there was a lot of cool people there so yeah it was great we've been back there many times and nice. I'm back there in November for two weeks oh nice well our youngest son I mean our oldest son just came to Panama and his his hope is to leave Panama and go to Thailand and spend some time there. So we'll have to get some information from you on where he needs to go and things he needs to see. He kind of wants to be a, a beach bum out there for a little while, I think. Well, there's, there's lots of great places. And again, it's like every country, there's a lot of diversity in which part of the country you go to. And I can look him up with some people his age. There's a, I know a lot of people, a big community in that sort of, 25 to 40 demographic that the guys are really killing it in that space perfect that's absolutely perfect so let's talk about what was your last adventure like i don't know well it was yeah that's that's right (laughs) it was the um, cruise from tokyo through ultimately ending up at vancouver Uh, because it left from tokyo we went to japan for a week before okay days got the fast train to Kenson up to Kyoto and back to Tokyo and boarded the ship. And then I think within a few days we met you and Mitchell and a bunch of yeah. other people. And it was a great, a really good cruise. It was our first major cruise. We had done a cruise many years ago, but we hadn't sort of perceived ourselves to be cruising people. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were with our friends, you know, and it was a really good experience. And I think... There was a lot of sea time, which, you know, we were just unaware of this and, and it didn't really lean on us too much because it was such a good social element to the trip. 
Right. And the last so, one, hmm? so was it was it Karen and Kevin that talked you and you guys into doing this cruise since you haven't you've never done a major cruise like this before? Yes, it was. They've, they've done seven or eight. And mm-hmm. we've traveled a fair bit with them um, and with other couples, but hadn't cruised. And so mm-hmm. they sort of said, look, you've got to give this a go. And it was good. It was good. What was the, be- what, was the- what was the best part of the trip for you? Uh, look, the scenery when we got to Alaska around the Hubbard yeah. Nation, that was pretty remarkable because we live in a very, you know, hot, beachy climate. Yeah. So it was mm-hmm. the opposite to that. But uh, I think the other side was, was on in the putting the cruise in perspective is the social elements um right. the people that we met and the friendships that came out of that was um you know, was very pleasing we we enjoyed it a lot yeah it was um that was the thing that struck me by uh this trip it was so different from anything we had ever done before because we'd always been beach people You know, especially when we lived in the States, because we didn't live in a beach destination, we were always trying to get to the beach. And so it was very difficult for us to decide that we were going to take a cruise to Alaska. We wanted to see it, but we didn't want to have to be cold because we always wanted to go to the beach. And it was only because Edwin was on this ship, my son, that we went ahead and pulled the trigger and I'm so glad that we did. In fact, we booked a group. Um, we put some group space together for next year uh, to go back to Alaska, just Alaska. And, you know, uh, it was for us as well. We've been in some places where it could be in the winter and it would be very cold. And mm-hmm. I would find it uncomfortable. So we chose to do Alaska, which we've been wanting to do for a long time. But as you said, do it when it's not bitterly cold. Right. Be the the summer months obviously you can't get into the port otherwise mm-hmm. so it was it was an excellent for us i mean the temperature was wonderful we had great um the weather was great all the way through i think we had maybe yeah. one yeah. Dri- drizzly day yeah just one and and in fact edwin was at uh icy what is the icy point straits icy straight point i can never get those two words together but he was yeah. there today and the first thing i asked him was what's the weather like and he said it was in the 50s, but it was no rain. So, you know, that was the only place we really had any drizzly kind of weather the whole time. Well, it, yeah, that's right. And that was the only place we did a two or three hour bush walk. <laughs> <laughs> it got a bit rain on. And of course, the bears we were going to see, they all climbed back in under the yep. bushes or whatever. So we just got rain on, didn't see any, but it was still just <laughs> such a great experience walking through those the natural habitats it was great right so you so you went hiking there what else did you mm-hmm. do um on the trip did you do any whale watching or you know yeah we did. did we did a, a couple of trips out excursions on whale watching and mm-hmm. the second one particularly was excellent where we got up close to a large mother humpback and a baby and they were only like mm-hmm. 15 meters from the boat so we had a lot of, spent a lot of time actually very close to them and it was a terrific experience. So we paddled on a on a lake in, um, maybe it was Kentuckian, and mm-hmm. with a group of other people. We were paddling our own canoe around the lake and the guys talking about, you know, the whole aspect of that part of the country. And that in itself was good. Everyone had to participate and go have a little campfire further along the shore and, again, an experience you wouldn't normally do, but uh, right. it worked out really well. So what would, which, which area through our travels did you like the most? Did you, cause you spent a week in Japan. Um, was it Alaska? It, did it just steal the show? Look, yeah, Alaska filled the show simply because of the scenery and, the, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a it's an area that we've never been to and we always aspired to go there and it sort of met all our expectations. We just had great days. What I would say about Japan is you, you just have to love the people there. They're just so polite and organized. And it was, well, I know. we were there during their golden week, which is like their big national holiday. And you'd think it would be super crowded because we caught the train during the middle of that up to, or down to Kyoto. And I've been in China during, unfortunately, during their um, 
their uh, their major holiday, which is the Chinese New Year, and that's like utterly chaotic. There's hundreds of millions of people all move around over a two week period. Right. So yeah, different different type of profile socially, I think. There's totally. It's very very pleasant. A very. Uh, I've never been to a place so clean in my whole life. I mean, every place was so clean and everything was so organized and efficient. I mean, that was just ridiculous how much, how efficient they are. Yeah, look, I think it's just a cultural thing there. Um, it's hard to it's hard to picture these people you see today, and you you know, if you reflect on the war era and all the rest, mm-hmm. it's kind of the antithesis of what you see today. So, yeah, they and they're very community. You know, probably a little xenophobic. There's not a lot of. We live in right. immigrant country, so a lot of diversity here. But right. they seem to have a social compact about respect and you know, for not only the place they live but for each other. So it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, you you traveled with friends. Was it just the four of you, or were there some more friends that we just didn't meet while we were with you guys? It was just four no, of you, right? Yeah, just the four. So there are people out there that are interested in traveling with friends, but are concerned about traveling with friends. How did you find it? You you guys have traveled um, before internationally and domestically, I'm sure. So is there a secret or is it just personalities mesh and you guys are just good friends like that? Personalities. Um, everyone has to know each other pretty well, in my opinion. You never know. You can you can draw the good straw and randomly would be with people. But I think, you know, different times we've got other friends here. We, we maybe spent three or four weeks in Sri Lanka, let's say mm-hmm. um, we might've spent three or four weeks traveling and driving up through Italy. You have to know who you're with and everyone is close friends and they're patient. And, you know, they, when things get a little stressy that they're, they're careful with each other. And that's, right. But if you get that right, it's a great dynamic because you get a, you know, you shared a lot of the great experiences. That's the truth. That's very true. Um, we didn't start traveling with friends until probably five years ago. And you're absolutely correct about it's the personalities because even in, even five years ago when we took a trip, there was 10 of us, people we hang out with at, at our house all the time. And then something happened on the trip and one of the couples, I don't know, we don't, to this day, we don't know what happened, you know? And so things like that can happen when you travel with friends, but for the most part, if, if you know the people and maybe the group was too big, you know, sometimes when it's 10, 10 close friends like that, even though you've known each other, it, it, sometimes something happens, somebody says something and, you know, it just doesn't work out. But you met some yeah. really cool people on the ship, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, look, absolutely. And that, that was one of the, you know, the pleasures of the experience was we connect, you know, you guys were one. There was a host of others. There's some really nice Americans. There was some more Australians we met. There's a couple of Brits there as well. Mm-hmm. And the way it sort of worked out, everyone had that meeting place in the afternoon. They kind of yeah. found found their their bar they liked and (laughs) hung out and you know things grow and flower from that when people have like-minded aspects and outlooks so it was very good it was very good I was so happy to meet you guys I've always felt that the Australians have been really fun people to hang out with when we went to Fiji we we met a, a group of Australians and they were always the life of the party yeah, it can be a bit loud. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit loud. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's also, um, I think it's a humour. Australians yes. try not to take themselves too seriously. Um, right. It's a very egalitarian society. It doesn't matter whether you're the prime minister or you're the, the guy taking the garbage bins in. Everyone deserves to be treated pretty the same. So it's very flat. Um, equal, not not always, and there's always, right. you know, there's no class system here, and everyone gets the respect they they earn and deserve. I think is the way you might view that. Yeah. So what? Um, why was this? Why was Alaska on 